I just got here to my local coin shop. I'm about to go inside to see if I can add some silver and gold to the stack. Stacking Cat. Hey there everyone, and welcome to the Stacking Cat channel, where I talk all things silver with a little bit of gold. Alright, so I just was out at my local coin shop, which is Castro Valley Coin in Castro Valley, California. Now, I hadn't been out there in a little bit of time, probably about six weeks or so. I've been doing a little bit more online shopping, but I wanted to get out there and see how the guys were doing and see what type of selection that they had. It's usually a good one. So I was looking for some silver and I was looking for some gold, of course. And so let's get out there. Okay, so this was me out at Castro Valley Coin in Castro Valley, California. Now I'm doing this as a voiceover. There were four other people in there besides myself. So a lot of chatter going on and I want to kind of keep it about the coins and leave what was said there, there. So I will just kind of go through all the different gold and silver coins that I checked out while I was there. And like I said, I'll do a little voiceover and some commentary on what I saw and how I made my decision. So I was looking through all the gold first, of course, here. We have a few quarter ounces that I was looking at. And the first one I thought was the $5 Indian head. Actually, it was the two and a half dollar, which usually carry a pretty high premium for a smaller gold weight, a 0.12 ounces of gold. Here is a quarter ounce proof gold American Eagle or American Gold Eagle. Sorry, uh, I almost was uh, going to go with that one, but I didn't want the proof. I know the premium would be a little bit higher. Here is a quarter ounce gold Krugerand, a 1982. And the Krugerand is definitely on my list as a coin that I would like to get in the gold version. Of course, I do have a one ounce silver already, but no gold. And that maybe this is the time. So here is a Liberty head that I was checking out as well. Kind of beat up, not in the greatest condition. He has a few others in the back that are in better condition but I'll probably not go with that one. They're just always fun to look at. And as you can see here, he has a lot of the $5 gold commemoratives from the US Mint, which of course began in 1986. I just got the Constitution one in a random coin deal through SD Bullion. It was the 1987 a Bicentennial of the Constitution. Go back and check out that video if you want to see what it looks like. It is a pretty cool commemorative. So I was happy to get that. Now this would be a dream coin right here. This is a 1927 St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle. Just a beautiful coin. Probably my favorite gold coin of them all, whether it's pre-33 or current bullion. Love that one. Just wasn't in the market though for any of those. And here's one of those uh, $5 gold commemoratives, the Statue of Liberty, which of course was the first year that these came out. 1986 and it's in the proof version maybe go with it we'll see what else they have here's another Krugerand here's a 1980 the first year that they were released as fractional sorry you can't see it as well sitting there in the 2x2 two two, but exactly the same as that 82 that I just showed you guys other than the date but the gold Krugerand you know the Gold coin synonymous with gold coins, probably above all others across the globe. Here is an American Gold Eagle. It looks like a 2020 one ouncer. Now I was not in the market for a one ounce gold coin, but it's just fun to look at them, right? Just going through all this stuff and kind of think about what uh, you might be able to get one day. I was looking for a quarter ounce gold coin but I have to check these out. Actually, that was the year 2000. All right, so I wanted to get some silver as well. I love looking through his vintage silver round tray. He has quite a few vintage silver rounds. You never know what's gonna be there. It just depends on who's in there selling to him and all the turnover. He has a few of these Amark Silver Liberties, or Liberty Silvers, sorry, 1985. 
One of my favorite rounds from that era. Really like the design. I like the proof-like finish there in the field. Things sparkling. Beautiful round. So yeah, quite a few of those 85s. As you can see, there's some buffaloes. I know those aren't vintage. However, they're in that tray. Here's another uh, vintage round. I believe this is a trade unit, international trade unit round. Yeah, have quite a few of those with different um, obverses, but trade unit's a trade unit. You know, they're pretty much all the same. I know there's a few of them that probably carry a little bit higher of a premium, maybe a little more prestige, but there are a lot of them. And as you can see right there, there's quite a few. Of course, you could tell by the weights that they have on the back there, on the reverse. There's a koala there for some reason. I don't know why that would be in this tray. He usually has the government issued bullion separate. So just kind of going through all these rounds, you know, this is the best part of a coin shop in my opinion. Just browsing, going through and seeing what they have and what you uh, may be able to afford one day. And, you know, you don't have to really worry about what is in stock on a page. It's just a free for all, basically, and just pick out what you want. Right. You know, that is the uh, most important thing. I mean, there were so many private mints back in the 1970s and 1980s and into the 90s and nowadays. But particularly back then, they just minted tons of these uh, one ounce silver rounds. Now, this one was pretty cool. This Haley's Comet. I remember it as a kid. I was nine years old when this happened. I believe I went to the uh, local planetarium and they had this huge Hubble-like telescope. And I'm just kidding. Just a huge telescope that you're supposedly be able to see it. I don't know if that happened or not. But the Halley's Comet round, it's, you know, pretty nice uh, subject matter. It's always fun just to see what's out there. I mean, there's so many random rounds. I, you, there's just anything. Like, here's a Christmas round. A lot of holiday rounds. They still make those to this day. And who knows how many hundreds, maybe even thousands, dare I say, uh, silver holiday rounds there are out there. Some more A marks here. So, uh, here's the rest of his display. Quite a few items. Let's get a little bit closer. These are more government bullion. And sorry, this is going through glass through the uh, display case. So if the image isn't the best, I do apologize. But you can see we have some uh, turtles there and some Darth Vader rounds. So as you all can see, I did pick up some nice silver there. Of course, I did pick up some gold as well. And if you notice when I was kind of showing you guys all the different gold coins that they had, they had a couple of these quarter ounce Krugerands. And this is a gold coin I've been looking to add to my stack for quite a while now. Now, the gold Krugerand, the one ounce version, at least, is synonymous with physical gold coins around the world. They were the first government backed gold coin the South African Reserve Bank actually released them back in 1967. And since then, they've really been what people have relied upon as their gold coinage the world over. Now, during the 1970s, this was by far one of the more popular bullion coins, silver or gold, primarily because they were the only gold ones around. Of course, in 1979, the Royal Canadian Mint jumped in with their Maple Leaf, and in 1981, we saw the Mexican Gold Libertad. Then the Chinese Gold Chinese Panda came out, the American Gold Eagle, and we had an influx of gold coins backed by sovereign government mints across the world hit the market, which may be... Uh, took a little bit away from the Kruger and standing since there were so many out there at that point. Now they did not mint the fractional sizes, the quarter ounce until uh, 1980. And so I had a choice between a 1980 and a 1982. And this one just looked like the best one that he had. So 
I decided to go with it. Got a really good price. So thanks to the guys out there at Castro Valley Coin for that. So it's just nice to add a, another gold coin to the stack. Another fractional uh, gold coin compared to some of the other ones like the Canadian Gold Maple Leaf and the American Gold Eagle that I have. I also have a quarter ounce uh, Mexican Gold Libertad. So it's always nice to have as many of these different countries' gold coins as possible. I'm just glad I was able to add a Krugerrand. As like I said, it really is the gold coin the world over. Wherever you go, uh, people will know what the gold Krugerrand is, especially in the precious metals world. So glad to add one of those to the stack. And as you see, I did get some silver. They always have a really good collection of vintage generic rounds. So had to go with another one of these 1985 Amark Liberty Silver rounds. Has that proof-like finish there in the field. These are really cool. And another uh, story about Amark, which is pretty fun to tell, is when the Mexican Silver Libertads first hit the market in 1982-1983. It was actually Amark, which was the distributor of them here in the United States. So just a fun little fact. Of course, this is around the same time as you guys could see in 1985. Really like the Eagle, it is very similar to the Heraldic Eagle that you see on the reverse of the uh, Liberty Head Pre-33 gold coins. Whether it's all the way up from the Quarter Eagle through the Double Eagle. I love those Liberty Head Pre-33 gold coins. And if you've watched the channel, um, I'm sure that you would notice that too as I purchased quite a few of them and showed them here in different videos and of course i got a couple of 2021 american silver eagles he had a good price on these so i picked two more up i am trying to stack a tube of these i like to do it each time the new year comes upon us it is stacking the current year and of course this is the last year of the Type 1, and the Type 2s should be out sometime here in 2021, late summerish. I'm guessing. Maybe around Labor Day, we will have to wait and see. Maybe before that, maybe in early August, who knows. So I got two more of those, and now I am up to four um, American Silver Eagles for 2021. So 16 to go, but it's only January, so we will see how that goes. All right, so uh, pretty good haul from Castro Valley Coin there. I enjoyed my time visiting out there with the guys, just joking around, having a good time. Uh, hit up your local coin shops as well if you get the chance. It is well worth it. Just talking to like-minded individuals, and especially these guys, or, or at least in my case, have a lot more knowledge when it comes to gold and silver coins, of course, numismatics and just the whole industry of stacking coins gold and silver whatever it may be coin collecting uh, just a really good resource to have check out your local coin shops that is definitely my advice if you are able to do so okay so that's going to wrap things up then for this video and i hope that you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed taking a little look into the coin shop and just what you may expect when you go to one yourself. And if you'd like to see similar videos about silver with a little bit of gold, then please subscribe and push that notification bell, smash that like button, and leave a comment. And until next time, this is the Stacking Cat.